Hey friends, what up? Ooh, ciao. Hey friends, what up and welcome back. It has been probably a hot ass minute since I made a video, but I've been real lazy lately, really, really lazy. So those of you who have been around for a minute know that usually in June, in June I do like a birthday haul. Um, it's usually a, a luxury haul. Um, and I did do that. Usually I start in, I want to say at the beginning of May, um, just so that I can have everything by the time my birthday comes around. My birthday is June 25th. Um, and I did do that this year. It just so happened that like by mid June, I wasn't working anymore. And then I got really lazy. So most of the things that I ordered have been, um, they're still sitting over there in boxes because I haven't opened um, any of them. And usually I just do a haul video and show you everything I got and then proceed from there. I am not going to do that this year. This year I'm just going to do the items, you know, and then I'll give you like highlights. So this is going to be the first video. Um, usually every year I tend to stick to the lower end of the luxury um, brands or prices. But this year... I don't know, maybe I was feeling myself or something, but this year I decided to go uh, and try some of the things that I have been wanting to try for a very long time, but they are like the top tier of the luxury stuff um, that I just, I couldn't bring myself to get before. And I don't know, I just kind of felt like it this year. I don't know what happened. But because of that, um, there are some, wait, what was I trying to say? Um, because of that, I don't know if many of these things are like brand new. I don't, I don't think some of them are, I don't think some of them are, but, um, and also there's less stuff than there usually would be. Cause usually I would get like the whole summer collection of like Guerlain or Dior or something like that. And I was going to get the Dior collection. I was going to get the Dior collection, but the one thing that I was waiting on, they did not have it on the Dior US site until like two weeks ago. And then I'm just like not interested anymore. Um, I had pre-ordered some stuff from Selfridges and I just got an email like two, maybe three days ago saying that it was going to be shipped out in the next 48 hours. So that's probably not going to get here until like, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to, like I said, give you highlights, but today we're going to start off with one of the brands that I did um, wind up getting. Um, I did get some stuff from Guerlain, not new stuff, I don't believe. Um, I did also get some Charlotte Tilbury stuff, which is not like luxury high luxury. It's luxury, but it's not like in price, price wise, it's not like, oh my God. Um, I did get some of that. I did get some Le Mer. Um, I also got some Cicely Paris. Um, I did say Gucci already. Did I say Gucci? I also got some Gucci. And the thing that we're going to be looking at today, I got some stuff from Decorte. Decorte is a Japanese brand and I have been looking at this brand for a hot ass minute. I have been wanting to try some of their stuff for a while so I just gave in and went ahead and ordered some shit. I sure did. All right, so like I said, Decorte, excuse my hair, um, you know. Anyway, so like I said, Decorte is a Japanese brand. You guys know how I love Japanese pretty much everything. Um, I haven't dabbled in a lot of Japanese makeup that isn't specifically made for the Western market. So this is new and this is going to be interesting. Whew. Um, Anyway, so I got some stuff from Decorte. I got their, the thing that I was most interested in and that I actually went to their website for and wound up getting other things um, was there were two things that I was really interested in. It was their Dip in Glow, which is a highlighter, which we're not going to try this today. We're going to do that in a separate video. Um, and then their uh, face powder. Uh, this comes in, I want to say six shades. It is $50. You get, ooh, you get point, wait, how many ounces is this? You get 0.7 ounces. Um, it's really cute. I got the shade eight, which is pink glow. It looks like this. Um, there are there are a couple of other shades uh, that I could have probably gotten. There is one called Terra um, and another one, but I wanted to try the pink one because uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, pink um, acts as a really good brightening agent for darker skin tones. Um, so I wanted to try that, but we're not gonna do this today. Um, uh, now, this foundation. 
This is their Soft Cream Foundation, and I had a hell of a time picking shades for this because Japanese, well, Asian makeup, well, I don't know much about Korean makeup, so I'm just going to speak about Japanese makeup. Um, Japanese foundations are not, they're not numbered in the way that uh, Western brands are numbered, so it can be very difficult to choose a shade. Um, and so I chose a shade based off of swatches that I've been looking at online for like literally months. Um, but since I've been looking at them, there seem to have been a couple of new shades added to the range. This uh, only has 12 shades, by the way. There seems to be a couple of new shades that have been added to the range. Two of them look darker than Honey, um, but I couldn't find swatches for them. So I just went ahead and got Honey, so we're going to see how well this works for me. Um, this is $110. You didn't hear me? Okay, this is $110. Yeah, that's what I said, $110 for foundation. Um, and you get, bitch, you get less than an ounce. All right, so let me read some claims from Decorte about what this foundation is supposed to be. When, yeah, Experience the unexpected, soft to the touch, this cream foundation instantly perfects the complexion while vastly improving skin's health and vitality with time. That's another thing. Decorte is mainly a skincare brand, so they have way more skincare products than they do um, color complexion products, and all of their complexion products are infused with skincare. Uh, continuing, it says ultra, wait, what? It says uber antioxidant shirakaba tonic infuses infuses skin with clarity and renewal. Washi paper optics create a low definition look for luxe new luminosity. The coverage is medium to full and it is long wearing. Honey is supposed to be cool and dark, but one of the things that I found out about uh, Japanese makeup, especially the stuff that's made in Japan, um, is that I'm better off choosing a cool shade because a warm shade is always too yellow for me. Anyway, it comes in this gorgeous. Um, and she comes with a spatula because, you know, clean. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a wear test on this. It is uh, quite late already, but I am actually going to be having a pretty late night tonight. Well, not that late. I'll probably be back here by like 1130, 12 o'clock maybe. Um, so it is now 126. Um, I have already put on the Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer, which I'm not feeling today because it gave me a little bit of a white cast, um, which is not cool. And then I'm wearing my sunscreen, which is the Ilia sunscreen, which kind of mitigated the white cast just a little bit, but we shall see. Um, I haven't really looked at the color yet, so we don't know what it's looking like. All right, so this is what honey looks like. I think it actually looks lighter on camera than it does in real life, and it's still quite yellow, so you. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be a hot ass mess. But I'm just going to go in with a little bit on this side. Wow, that's pretty pale. It is fragranced. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Okay, so that did not look like it was going to be the right color at all, but wow, okay. Alright, so I wound up using the Beauty Blender 
to kind of like um, push it into my skin more, especially along my hairline. It just looks really um, too much. But I am actually really surprised by this color. But anyway, this is what one side of my face looks like on the other side. Um, I like the finish. It's very, this is not medium coverage, but sure. And I think I do prefer applying it better with, this is a dry sponge, by the way. Um, I do prefer applying it better with a dry sponge. The finish is quite beautiful. All right, let me finish the rest of my face and then I will be right back. You guys, I don't hate it. I feel like I should, but I really, really don't. Um, whoa, we're gonna have to modify this real quick. Um, the undertone, I don't know. I feel like it really could have been worse. I'm very surprised by the way I was able to like blend that in um, because it looked super light and like super yellow, but I don't hate it. All right, so I guess I didn't need a yellow base concealer. It seems to have blended out just fine. Um, but I am going to go ahead and do some bronzing and some contouring. So I'm actually gonna use the Ilia bronzer because I want warmth more than like shadow around the perimeters of my face. But let me just say right off the bat that, once again, I'm gonna say it again. I don't hate it. I'm very surprised. Um, that I was able to actually uh, blend in the shade as well as I was considering what it looked like when I first applied it. Um, super, super surprised by that. Uh, it is a very, very beautiful finish. It's a soft luminosity to the finish. Um, it looks very natural. And bear in mind that this, it, it's it's summer, and even though I've mostly been indoors, it doesn't really take direct sunlight for me to get darker. Just heat, I'm fine. You should see the tan lines, uh, the flip-flop lines on my feet, and I don't wear flip-flops outside, just the patio, so yeah. Um, so this would probably look actually really, really nice in the winter time. We'll see. Also, the smell is gone. Um, can't feel it on my face, like, at all. It is, however, not full coverage. Um, not even a little bit. Medium at best. All right, so look at my face. One side with, you know, the bronzer and the other side without easily fixable. Um, like I said, it's a little bit more yellow than I would like because I am not yellow. Um, but this isn't bad. I actually really like it. And this is literally all I'm doing to my face for the rest of the day. Literally. Um, it is now, what time is it? It is now 1.37 in the afternoon. I'm using my old phone. It says 1.37 in the afternoon. Um, this is what my face looks like. And I will be back later. I will be back later on so you guys can see the results of my wear test. Day number one, using the Tatcha Primer. Um, which turned me a little bit white, which might have something to do with the way it went on too. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I have a feeling that this foundation is going to do very well with no primer. Yeah, I can't find my Milk Makeup Primer, so that might be the next day, so it might just wind up being two days. Um, but yeah, this is what we have so far. It is 1.37 p.m. I will be back here later on so you guys can see the results of my wear test, and until then, deuces. Hey guys, what up? Welcome back. It is now 9.13 in the evening and I've been wearing this foundation for almost eight hours and this is what my face looks like. Um, as you can see, I am pretty greasy, uh, but in defense of the foundation, it was 87 degrees today and I spent, I want to say, 90% of the day sitting on the patio um, reading, so yeah. Um, she is gone from my nose. Um, there's a lot of shifting happening, um, here on my forehead, uh, right here also. Um, it's really, it's gone into some lines here, um, and it's pretty much gone from here, but yeah, this is what my face looks like. I don't think it looks 
terrible like you can't see those things unless you're like really really close um but yeah i think i have a feeling that it probably would have done better with the milk makeup primer which i couldn't find today um the tatcha is just not built for summertime we've had this conversation before it's really kind of terrible for summertime so i don't know if it would, it would have done better with the milk makeup primer or by itself but we will see tomorrow um it started to break down i want to say uh probably around 4 30 is when i started to get greasy right here um i looked at it when I first uh, put it on and I was like yo this looks really weird but it really doesn't it really doesn't I took two pictures outside one in direct sunlight and one you know in natural light and I'll put them here so you guys can see what they look like but like I said before it's a very beautiful finish I actually really do like the finish it is very comfortable the smell went away almost instantly and I have not had any itching or burning or anything like that so yay for that um, as for the, you know, slippage and stuff like that, once again, I'm going to attribute that to the Tatcha mostly and the fact that it was like 87 degrees and humid today. But yeah, this is what we have after eight hours of wear. It's not terrible. Um, I've actually, I've actually been worse. Yeah, I've actually been worse. So yeah, this is what we have for day number one. And I will see you back here in a couple of seconds for day number two. Bye. Hey guys, good morning and welcome back to day number two of testing out the Decorte Soft Cream Foundation. Full disclosure, this is probably going to be the final day because I still can't find my Milk Makeup um, Hydro Grip Primer, so today I'm just using nothing. Um, so I've already done my under eyes using the Ilia um, True Skin Serum Foundation in uh, mesquite and I am also wearing my Ilia sunscreen in Dominica and so we're just gonna go in on bare skin well not really bare skin because I'm wearing the sunscreen but you know what I mean without primer um, and go I'm gonna use the same method that I used yesterday which was to um, kind of sort of spread the foundation first with uh, a brush and then use a beauty blender to press it in my skin um, because that just seems to work better for me. Alright guys, I am back and it is now 18 minutes, wait, it's 18 minutes past 7 in the evening. I don't remember what time I left here, um, probably, I think it was like 11.54 or something like that. So I've basically been wearing uh, the foundation for just about the same amount of time that I was wearing it yesterday. I think it's 7 hours today instead of 8 like yesterday. And this is what my face looks like. 
as you can see, my face looks pretty much the same that it looked like it looked yesterday. Um, the funny thing about it, though, is that I did use my Huda Beauty um, powder to set it today, and I was not outside quite as much today as I was yesterday. So I'm actually pretty surprised that it behaved the same way. Um, I think maybe the foundation is just a little bit too emollient for me. Um, what do I think about this foundation? Hmm. All right, so you guys are probably tired of hearing me say this, but it surprised me. Like you saw from the color, um, it probably, it looked super light, but the way that it blended in, it really did not look like it was too light and it was very surprising to me. Also, even though it was slightly too light, um, the undertone is a little bit off, but it was very easily fixable. Um, and also I will put pictures that I took up here today uh, with the finishing powder, it actually matched perfectly. Um, is it worth $110? <sighs> you know, there's very few times that I will ever think that a foundation is worth more than like $60 tops. I feel like that's my, I feel like that's the, the top of my range. Like anything, anything over $60, you got to be really, really good. Like you need to put yourself on my face. You need to blend yourself out. You need to be the perfect color. You need to be the perfect undertone. Anything over that, just like you got to be stellar, spectacular. And this just wasn't, um, the funny thing about it though, I do feel like, I do feel like it might perform better in terms of both color and, um, you know, performance wise, perform did I just say that? Um, both in terms of color and uh, longevity in the winter time, because I feel like it's not a foundation that's pretty well suited to hot, humid weather. But the funny thing about it, once again, I've been sitting inside all day in um, the AC. I've been outside, of course, because I, I don't do well sitting in the house all day, but I haven't been outside as much as I was yesterday. So it should have behaved a little bit better. And as you can see, like all of this right here is like a hot mess. Um, I, it might be slightly better than it was yesterday. It might be slightly, slightly, but not enough to, you know, like be noticeable to, for me to be like, oh, it was great today. It, it, no. Um, so will I be returning this? Probably. Probably. Simply because, number one, I don't think it's worth $110. I get why it's $110. You know, you're paying for the name. It's skincare infused. You guys know how I feel about that. It's bullshit. Um, and so you're paying for the, the luxury of the name De Corte. Um, but for me personally, it's not worth $110. And since I have a bunch of other foundations that are, you know, of the same, um, price point, it doesn't make sense for me to keep something that just barely performs. It's a beautiful foundation. It is a beautiful finish. Um, it takes about four hours before it actually starts to break down, you know, three, three and a half to four hours before it actually starts to break down. But other than that, there's really nothing to recommend it. You know what I mean? So like $110, man, no. All right, guys, thank you for joining me for my review on the Decorte Soft Cream Foundation. The shade, once again, that I got was 355. Was it 355? Yeah, 355 Honey. Um, I'm probably going to wind up returning this. Um, it's just not stellar to me. There's nothing really, oh my God, about it for me to be like, okay, I'm gonna keep this $110 foundation because it's great. It's great. It, it's not. Um, I wish I had really liked it because I've been looking forward to trying this foundation for probably about a year now, but unfortunately it is what it is. Um, that joint will be going back. But thank you guys for joining me again. As usual, it's been real. It's been fun. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.